first place finisher in the regular season with Samford. First time they had done that since 2017. The big win for Furman it was over fourth seed UVA by one on a last second shot. And away we go in the round of 32. San Diego State, of course, opens into man to man. They put good pressure on the ball. They try to limit penetration and they help one another very well. It's Lawson on top. The geese outside. And they go into Heen, who's quickly doubled, swerving in, but gets the first basket. Well, excellent patience by Furman, finding Heen on the mismatch on the switch and getting the ball over the top. Not easy to get the ball close to the basket on San Diego State. Here come the Aztecs, number 18 in the last AP poll. This is Trammell outside, a transfer. Mensa, the two-time defensive player of the year, with Bradley, their leader. It's a Butler three. Rebound inside, claimed by Slauson, and here comes Furman. Conference record of 15 and three. Oh, oh. Wide open lane, kicking it out. Heen, three. And a rebound by Johnson, the Aztecs the other way. That's a great play, though, by Foster, and that's the tempo Furman would like to play at. Johnson scooping it off. Mensa, a lot of congestion with the whistle inside. It'll be on the Paladins. As they quickly call it on Heen, uh, Dan, who picks up his first of the game. And San Diego State doesn't want to play racehorse basketball, but they don't mind getting down the court quickly either. And Furman, we've talked a lot about, uh, the other day we talked about the Virginia defense. We've been talking about the San Diego State defense. Furman plays really solidly on that end as well. Trammell three, lassoing that ball with the rebound. Mike Bothwell, who fouled out in game one, he takes it up and in and takes it the length of the floor. You know, when you miss a three, sometimes that allows your opponent to get out and go. Yeah, and San Diego State talked a lot about Bothwell yesterday, not letting him get to his left hand. He gets to his left hand the first time he has the ball. Crafty little move right there by Lamont Butler. Slauson will take it the other way. Heen finally balls it out. And Pagis. San Diego State got away with a foul on Slauson there. Pugis three over Trammell. Rebound is taken. It's Butler the other way. Good feed. Mensa. Mensa really runs, and they don't set up a lot for him in the low post, but they like to get the ball to him in transition. Well, this is how San Diego State likes to play. Everything in the paint. They're on the pick and roll. They get it to Mensa, and he's able to finish. They want the ball in the paint. Bob Ritchie talked a lot about yesterday. It's going to be a war in the box, talking about the lower defensive box there. San Diego State won the other day. Their last win was 2015, so it had been a while. A fadeaway by Johnson. That was over Swanson. That's good defense, though, by Slauson. You get the guy shooting a fadeaway down there in the low post, you'll live with that. San Diego State has a lot of guys who can score where they bring four guys off the bench who can put points on the board. Cutting is Slauson. That's called the cut Slauson cutoff as he took it in. <laughs> and we're now in the midst of our second time. It's at least called the Slauson cut. Yes. Furman playing even faster than they normally play today. Bradley inside. Best of defenders awaiting. Johnson will take it in. He bashes his way into Swanson, who is down and a foul. It goes on the Aztecs. And Jalen Swanson, who's a fifth-year player, took it hard. Johnson picks up his first for San Diego State. You know, you lower that shoulder and you hit the guy in the chest. That's going to be a charge every time. But why do you need to get the ball closer to the basket? Because that's how San Diego State <laughs> plays. <laughs> they they want to get that thing as close as they can. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. They're presented by Great Clips. Well, we've seen it already for Furman. They want to protect the paint. We know they want to play fast, but they've also got to create and make some threes. This can't be a two-point battle against this Aztec team. Bothwell three. San Diego State is a very good rebounding team, particularly on the offensive end. You've got to keep them off. And then Furman is one of the best two-point shooting teams in the country, and San Diego State's got to make sure they don't concentrate so much on the three they forget about the two. 
Bradley picks up the two right there to get the Aztecs the lead. Just underway. Up next will be Tennessee and Duke here in Orlando. Foster. This team passes well, as you can see. Inside Bothwell. He tries to save it, not a bounds. Shot clock at 11. San Diego State switching all these screens and handoffs right at the moment, and that's going to create some mismatches as we saw earlier in the game. Yeah, and the thing I like about Furman, some teams, when they see the switches, it brings teams to a stop offensively. They get stagnant. Bob Ritchie and his staff have talked about just continuing to play and run their offense and stay on the attack versus the switches, and we see it here. Foster three, Bradley defends, rebound Mensa as Garrett Heen has taken a seat on the bench. Tyree Huey has checked in, a sophomore from Columbus. For the team in purple, Furman from Greenville, South Carolina. With the foul, it's on the Paladins and called on Foster. Early two-point Aztecs lead on CBS. And they get a win over a higher seed. Well, you guys have done hundreds of NCAA tournament games and seen a lot of great moments. That was the first game I had ever broadcast <laughs> in this tournament. This was my intro to NCAA tournament broadcasting. Amazing. I mean, started off what ended up to be an extremely fun day to watch basketball. Well, welcome to the tournament. Dan has been doing this for 37 years on network television. Dan, we're so happy to have you in your first. It's Paris rejected inside. Foster with the erasure. And the other way is Pagis, who gives it off to Foster and the Paladins on the move. They're doing a nice job. The floor is spread. You see nobody in the low post. They're trying to spread San Diego State out and create some openings for cutters. A rope is in. That's a long shot from outside, which is no good on the throw up there by Huey. But the Aztecs the other way in the tournament for the third consecutive season. Moving it around, good fake here, drive inside, and the roll bends up with it. And he had room. Well, that's what San Diego State does. They work on it every single day. They're going to duck you in all the time and seal you in the low post. It was the biggest part of Furman's defensive preparation yesterday in practice, led by associate head coach Jeremy Grow. They just kept talking about the duck-ins, the duck-ins, the duck-ins. The geese. Shot clock at five, works into a rope. Here's the kid with that big shot. It's another three from about right there. From about right there is where he drilled it and does it again. And that's their first three of the game, and they're going to need more of those. I totally agree with that. And the great the thing about Pagis is he had missed his previous 15 threes before he hit that shot the other night. Parrish can't nail the three we go the other way and first round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues today on ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. And for more information on game times and listings go to NCAA.com. You know so from a percentage standpoint San Diego State is actually a better three-point shooting team than Furman. And San Diego State is going to have to make some threes as well, but I, I think you got to try inside before you kick it out for the three. One thing too about San Diego State, Dan, their bench is terrific. One of the highest scoring benches in Division One, right, and they got four guys off the bench in there right now. Right. The rope in particular is so good down low. So Carter Witt has come in, the Wake Forest transfer for the Paladins, number 11. They go inside, and they were looking for Williams on the feed. It sails out of bounds. It's off of Furman, and the Aztecs the other way. Vanderwall has also checked in for the Paladins. Let's watch it. And, yep, off his hand. Ooh, that was close. Well, I, I don't think Ladee hit it. The Furman guy certainly did. Tremell with the ball, so a different lineup out there for San Diego State, as Dan was talking about. Seiko is out there, a rope is down low with the ball. Watch your rope work inside. Dancing here is Parrish. It's a rope. Hard 
Rebound inside, thrown away, loose. It's off at San Diego State. And a foul called here at the 13-26 mark. Ladee, the transfer, will pick it up for the Aztecs in white. Well, Dan, we can see early on exactly how both these teams want to play. Yeah. <laughs> San Diego State wants to pound it in, pound it in, pound it in. And Furman wants to get up and down the floor. And when they're in the half court, they want to spread the floor out, leave that middle open, and make San Diego State cover as much ground as possible. Slauson in a row. We'll try to dash his way in. The meta wall with three short inside picked up and put in Alex Williams. That three was just short enough because the ball came straight down. If that bounces off the rim, San Diego State was in perfect de defensive rebounding position. Never underestimate the role of luck. It's a D. Played at Ohio State and TCU. Twelve and a half to go. Come out. Whip will get it. He'll rock it the other way for the Paladins. And then it was taken away by Tremel with the bump and a foul. That's Tremel picking up his first for San Diego State. That ball just comes straight down, and a nice job by Williams. He got himself in the middle of all those white shirts, and the ball just ended up in his hands. And that's, I don't know that that's luck. That's the guy going where he's supposed to that's go. That's a great point. You put yourself in position to have the ball bounce to you. Yeah, you put yourself in position, you get lucky a lot. That's exactly right. Williams down low, Seiko will defend. Rebound, Ladee. Underneath, hold on here, and they go up high for Johnson. He's got four. Well, Slauson got back, but he let Ladee get behind him. Rick tries to sneak it into Williams and does. Nice assist and a good bounce. Well, Williams gave him a great lift off the bench the other day. Had six points in that one. Had 12 points and six rebounds in their conference championship game. He's been helping him. Harris goes working his way down low and picks up a foul for the Aztecs. That's the first on him. Each team is led by four. A couple ties and four lead changes from Orlando. Coach, you told me you wanted the ball in the paint. What do you see so far down low? We had some paint touches. So I think it's a pretty high-level game right now. Both teams are playing aggressively. They don't seem either one in fear of the moment. So that's good to see. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. It's just a big sign for these coaches. Aztecs of San Diego State, over 2,400 miles away from home. Have won 11 of their last 12. Paladins from nearby Greenville, not nearby, but close. Greenville, South Carolina, seven straight wins. They've won 15 of 16. Closer than San Diego. Closer so than, that was my point. Closer than, <laughs> closer than San Diego. <laughs> Vanderwall's up top. Bradley will defend. Well, if we look at these two coaches, if you look at all the coaches, current active guys who have coached at least 100 games, both of the coaches in this game are in the top 10 in winning percentage. Brian Dutcher fourth and Bob Ritchie tenth. That's the second three put in by Furman. Swanson nails it. His first of the day, and Danny's got five. Well, he's got five, and again, good patience. They're making that San Diego State defense work, and even though that was a long shot, he can make it. Bradley three, no foul. It will go on Ben Vanderwall. As Matt Bradley, the Cal transfer. This is deep, too. That is a deep three. So we've seen Slauson's two buckets today. One's on a cut to the rim, and then the other one's a deep three. We showed the clips of him from the last game. He just scores so many different ways. He had the double-double yesterday or a couple days ago against UVA. With Bradley at the line. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download the foul. Vanderwall, his first. 
Bradley, like I said, played a time at Cal. Three years, he was a starter for the Cal Bears. Uh, interestingly enough, Stan, a couple of times here the other day, he got fouled shooting the three. What is it about Bradley that causes guys to foul him when he's shooting the three? I don't know, and I just want to know what possesses guys to foul on a three. Like, I understand <laughs> the intensity of contesting shots, but people talk a lot about defenses, about intensity and playing hard. It's also about discipline, and the foul on a three is the worst defensive play any player can make. Rothwell will get the screen. Work inside on Johnson. Ray checked it inside. And a foul call. Again, the long team of the Aztecs. Their defensive efficiency, number 10 in the country. They protect the rim. It's the second on Johnson. But he gets off, the, he gets around this screen very quickly. And Johnson just a step slow getting there. And Johnson not tall enough, really, to stay on the hip of Both Bothwell, particularly when Bothwell brings his body into him while he's shooting. Bothwell is going to that left hand, much like. Sandy Bradley from San Diego State. If those two guys get going to their left end, they're usually going to get a chance to score or get to the free throw line. And one of the reasons they're so good driving is they do a great job. They're big guys, and they do a great job getting their body into the defender. I mean, not, I'm not saying they initiate the contact, but it makes it harder to block the shot. A rope is in. Keyshaw Johnson with those two fouls has taken a seat on the San Diego State bench. Well, the one thing with San Diego State, they don't have to worry quite as much about fouls to their front line guys, Dan, because they have such great depth up front. It's a rope. And Mensa, who's defended by Heen. Oh, it got congested inside. Out of bounds. Bothwell diving for it. Shot clock at 10. And a rope is telling him, shoot the ball. A rope was in great position for a rebound. And if he misses, and I think he was surprised. That's why they nearly lost that ball out of bounds. And, and I'm with the rope on that. He's got a better chance on the offensive board than he does of that pass. I don't know why Slauson is coming over on that to help out. I think he can play Mensa in the low post. Slauson can stay home and get on the glass. Yesterday, Ryan Dutcher said that a rope has the strongest Mental stance of any player on our team. He's number 33, and he set a screen right there. And here's the shot by Butler. They go inside, and it was caught by Heen. Well, Foster got a hand on that. That's the second one today he's gotten a, uh, a hand on. An excellent defender. That's why he's assigned to Matt Bradley and will be with him all day. Pagese and Butler. Go down low, and Foster tries to finagle his way free from a rope and down. Three, Pagese. Rebound, Bradley. Two traffic. It's Butler fighting himself at the line, and the rope is down low and doubled. When a rope gets it that close, he is really good. He's down tough, here. you're right. Swanson glides down court. Picked up by Mensa, defended by a rope. Bradley, the collision, and down in the turnover. A Slauson missed on that drive, but that was a big time move. And here's what you're talking about with a rope, Dan. He gets it down there. He is really tough. But Slauson doesn't even get up to contest on that. He just lets him go over the top. Well, a rope gave him a little bump, and I think it knocked Slauson off balance. And that's the thing about a rope. Not only does he have good strength, and he's really clever in there, but he also gets off the court really quickly when he's going to shoot the ball. And he's dealing with chronic injuries, a rope. He does not mm -hmm. practice. Yeah, I was here yesterday. He just rides the exercise bike <laughs> while they practice. <laughs> Lauren, what do you have? Coach is exactly right. He struggled with a hip and shoulder injury, vertigo. His body just gave out. He retired, but Coach said, I need you around the organization. So he, he was a glorified assistant for all of one day. AG said, I have to play, but my body's betraying me. And Coach told him, listen, just what Coach said. I need you to play. 
don't practice. How about that? Just play in games. You okay with that? And uh, yeah, and, you know, he's using an extra year of eligibility due to COVID, which the NCAA gave as we saw a traveling violation at the other end. He told us yesterday he showed up because Dutcher said, hey, you can keep your scholarship, but just come be around the team. <laughs> he was a student manager. He said, hey, step into this drill, step into that drill. And so <laughs> Dutcher, Brian Dutcher drew him in, and he thought, well, okay, I can play. And then that deal, you know, you don't have to practice. How many guys wouldn't take that deal? That's pretty much the NBA right now. <laughs> <laughs> it creeps in. First basket, Micah Parrish makes it work inside as San Diego State is coming off a win over 12th seed Charleston on Thursday. Here we have an offense of Furman with the ball, number 32, against the ninth ranked defense of San Diego State. The three is off on the shot by Foster. Those shots are the ones Furman's gonna have to make. Yes. That's a great pass by Slauson. Foster gets it in rhythm. They've gotta knock down some of those. Bradley. Defended and out of bounds and 17 on the shot clock. Coach, is this a football game? How do you contain him down low? Well, we just got to keep pressuring the ball and trying to make sure we have the court strong and uh, keep the ball out of the box as best we can. You know, they're doing a good job of getting it in there, but uh, we got we to try to be better. Thanks for the time. All right, thank you. Coach Richie Engineer, the first NCAA Furman win since 1974. Then they beat South Carolina. Thursday, they beat Virginia. Bradley, long shot. Inside, and it's brought in by Huey. Bothwell, under eight to go in the first half. Pagis, it's all oh, right, just knocked that ball away, denied. And he leaves the break the other way, and they finish it off well. Terrific transition, Micah Parson. Maybe he should have nobody practice. That looked pretty good for a guy who doesn't practice much. Incredible, I mean, Pagis thought he had plenty of space. Team in white, the Aztecs on a nine to one run. Green to Geese. This, this spread offense with the back cuts and everything. Colorado State in the Mountain West does that. So does Air Force. So this is nothing new for San Diego State. This through by Williams. And there is a common thread. Nico Medford, who was a coach for Furman, and Bob Ritchie was the assistant, then took over when Nico left to go to Drake, and eventually, as you say, Dan, to Colorado State as we go the other way, and the Aztecs face Colorado State often. And what you saw right there was the athleticism of the big guys for San Diego State. That's a roll out there, guarding a guard, and then leading the fast break. Foul, as Bradley had it, and Foster will pick it up. So both head coaches called Nico Medved to get the uh, skinny on the other team. <laughs> And Nico Medved was more interested in getting into the transfer portal and the recruiting than <laughs> talking to those two guys. But Nico Medved, an outstanding coach. I saw San Diego State's quarterfinal game against Colorado State, and I was looking, saying, how in the heck is that team under 500? Nice play by Butler from behind. And they got the steal, and Mensa gets it out to a rope. Well, Butler, another all-defensive guy in the Mountain West for the Aztecs. Now the media named Butler the player of the year, the defensive player of the year. The coaches named Mensa, so they have two defensive players of the year out there. Slicing inside, but unable to finish Butler. Trying to keep it alive down low with a whistle. And 6.26 to go in the first half. Furman has not scored in the last four and a half minutes from the floor. Huey picked up his first for the Paladin. One of the things Furman has done well so far is protect their own defensive backboards. That's only the second offensive rebound of the game for San Diego State. And that'll be key for them staying in this game. Dan, San Diego State's offense has struggled the last couple weeks. Yes, it has, and San Diego State's offense can struggle. And that's why Furman just has to hang close and maybe get a little spurred at the end. A rope, a burst. <laughs> Offensive rebound, Butler corrals, he'll try it again. A rope again, rid in there. Good feed, Parrish cutting for two. And San Diego State has their biggest lead so far. I don't know how that ball got through there. <laughs> well, interestingly, Bob Ritchie was calling for timeout as the ball went through, and then as Furman advanced the ball up the floor, he just changed his mind. Out of 
traffic in there. Bothwell lost it again. Another steal. It's Parrish on the move. Got the miss. Boy, Mintz is, he's begging for the ball. He's got it right now. He works on Williams. It's a 13-1 San Diego State run. There's the a whistle. There's a foul on Carter Witt. He pulled down a San Diego State player. This is actually a pretty good job by Williams to force him away from the basket, but Mensa gets it anyway. So the first goes on Witt. And watch the pull down. The number 11 there. Purple. Yep. Ooh, ooh. Not they're so gonna, sure. They're going to go look and see if that's a hook and hold. As they should. Timeout on the floor, 5-24 in the first. Take hold of this game with their defense and then with their inside play. Now, this is what the officials were reviewing right there. That Carter Witt locks up a guac a rope and he goes to the ground, but he sort of let him go as they were both falling to the ground. And so that's just a common foul. Now, San Diego State will keep the ball. They'll get the inbounds play. It was a three, and Parrish has nine. He's got the stroke, he averages seven. He had seven against Charleston on Thursday, nine already. Big drought for Furman in purple. Well, they had to come and double Ladee in the low post. He made an excellent pass out, and Parrish, one of the better three-point shooters. Pickpocketed Trammell, took it away from he. Numbers the other way. They go to Parrish on the pass inside. Put up Ladee with the assist. So you have one of your big guys lobbing it to one of your guards yes. in transition. 18 to one run for San Diego State. Williams the twirling Heen. And brought in. Parrish vacuums it up. Well, we've seen San Diego State do this to teams where their defense becomes dominant and then they just wear you out inside. Another three, Parrish, no. Saved by Bradley, throws it off the shins of the Paladin and out of bounds, but they'll see it is Furman's ball. It's Furman's ball because the first thing that the ball hit when it was out of bounds was Bradley standing out of bounds. Bradley gets the ball, throws it off, and it hits him when he's standing out of bounds, so it's out of bounds off Bradley. Nice hustle, though. In the game for Furman on Thursday against UVA, they trailed the Cavaliers by 12 twice and came back from that deficit in the second half. And as you can see here, they're down with uh, 13 points now to come back from here, 4-15 first half. But San Diego State goes through, like Virginia, they go through some offensive droughts. And so if you're Furman, you just have to keep playing. They've missed some open shots. Yeah, they're going to have to make some of these threes. They're two for 12 from three. And a good number of those have been really good looks. They're going to have to knock some of those down. San Diego State's three-point defense amongst the best in the country. And that's what they're facing, the Paladins, today. Shot clock at four. Heen against a rope, who knocked it away with a foul. Yeah, Heen got down in the post on Butler again off the switch. Great job by Furman recognizing the mismatch. A rope came over to help, but a little bit late. Well, a rope had a very productive 11 minutes. He scored four points. He had a couple of rebounds. He had a couple of blocked shots. Furman in the game shooting 32% from the floor. And the Aztecs of San Diego State have hit 50% of their shots. 13 to 26. And Furman in that 1-3-1 zone that really turned the game around against Virginia the other day. San Diego State spent considerable time going over what they wanted against this yesterday in practice. Seiko three. The winningest player in the Mountain West. Adam Seiko missing that shot. Coming up on AT&T at the half. Craig, Clark, Wally, and Charles will break down our first half and have a little live interview with FD. You head coach Tobin Anderson after the night's stunning upset of number one seed Purdue. All coming up on AT&T at the half from our CBS studios in New York.
So, Kevin, you're saying that game surprised you? <laughs> <laughs> it shocked a lot of people. But we've had two of them now very close together in the history of this tournament. Getting away, Swanson. Shot clock at five. De Geese goes up against Mensa. On the wing, Swanson, three fouled as he fired. And Brian Dutcher saying it's a flop. I think Butler did get into his landing space, Dan. And what created that whole thing was the great ball movement by Furman. That they were scrambling around, and he goes right into him. Yeah, that's not even a question there. And, and, and look, I love the intensity with which all these college players play, and we've seen some outstanding defensive players here in these two days. But fellas, you got a quick foul and three-point shooters. <laughs> Butler picked up the foul. That is his first. We have Swanson at the line, 77% free throw shooter. Danny had the double-double against Virginia Thursday with 19 points and 10 rebounds. And Kevin, the second time they were down 12, he had a 9-0 run all by himself to bring them within three. Jalen Swanson at the line. San Diego State the other way. We're now 141 again. We gotta attack it before there's eight seconds left on the clock like the last time. Ladee, Trammell, Ladee. They tried and tried with Butler. It's a firm and foul. This will go on Swanson, the Southern Conference Player of the Year, and he will pick up number one. And one of the things that we've seen is it's very difficult to get the big guys involved. A lot of contact right there. It's before the shot. But they're in the uh, bonus, so it's going to be one and one. So Lamont Butler is at the free throw line. 7.5 assist game on Thursday against Charleston. 73% from the strike. And you touched on this earlier, guys, about his defense. That is his calling card, and it's the first right there. He'll get another. Well, Butler's known as a young guy on this San Diego State team. He's one of two juniors that plays in their rotation. He and Micah Ferris, <laughs> seven seniors in that nine-man rotation. So this is the guy they turn to for youth. He's actually their third leading scorer. He's noted for his defense, but he's capable of having a big offensive game. So San Diego State won on Thursday. The last Mountain West Conference win was... 2018 in Nevada. They had lost 11 straight. And the Aztecs broke that on Thursday. And here they are. With the Geese driving on Mensa. Vanderwall. The Geese. In on Butler. Knocked away by Mensa. Climbing high and playing handball. And the other way, they got Butler. Another block by Mensa. A three by Bradley. And a rebound by Ledeen. Another offensive rebound for the Aztecs. They lead that category with five in this game so far. That offensive rebounding, and Dan, that is what they do so well. But the other thing Mensa does really well is block shots, and that ball didn't get to the board yet. It wasn't coming down, and he had to come over two guys, his own guy and Pegues, to get that ball. That was an incredible block on a great drive by Pegues. So you can see why the coaches out in the Mountain West would name him the Defensive Player of the Year. I can see that. Absolutely. And Furman's going to stay in that 1-3-1 right now. Got a rebound out of this zone now. Big drive for Furman. Almost 10 minutes with their last field goal. We got to move the ball and get it inside against this zone. It's a three from San Diego State. Oh, 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 Micah Paris with another one. He's got 12 and a couple threes here in the first half. There are always more than extra options. Absolutely. It is lead today for the Aztecs now at 14 points. There's a foul. Parrish with the bump as Bothwell was trying to maneuver. And Parrish picks up number two. Well, and I like the consistency there from the officiating staff. They had just made a similar call against Slauson at the other end when Butler drove it right into him and Slauson thought he was in position. Exact same call down here. The gate, 
the physicality of the game is picking up, and the officials, I think, are trying to get it under control. With a miss and 2,000 points score, Mike Bothwell from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Fifth all-time leading score for Furman, missing right there. Three. With a miss by Butler, and a rebound by Furman, and Bothwell from behind. And it was swiped at by Butler with a foul on San Diego State. Watch whip-around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break. It's presented by AT&T 5G in the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. And Bothwell will be at the free throw line again. Fifth season at Furman, along with Slauson, two fifth-year players who have enjoyed everything about the conference, but especially the team and the beautiful campus in Greenville. Well, and they're the all-time winningest players at Furman. 116 wins they've been a part of. Amazing careers. 28 wins this season. That is a school record for the Paladins. That looks more like Bodwell. He's an 83% three-point shooter. Right. A free throw shooter, excuse me. And he already missed a couple today. Well, we know this with Furman. These guys aren't going to let it go now. They're going to keep fighting. And they're back to the man-to-man. -man. Like we said, they trailed Virginia twice in the second half by 12. Spinner by Liddy. Terrific shot. Transfer from the Buckeyes. And the TCU program puts it in. And now he has his first basket of the afternoon. That's a tough shot. A spin into like an 8 to 10 foot floater for a big guy. Great touch. He had 8 points and 10 rebounds. On Thursday, half minute to play. Swanson, Bothwell. Shot clock at 3. He'll put up a long 2. It's the first Furman field goal in the last 11 minutes. Boy, that's some tough shot. A rope was right there. Timeout, San Diego State. Bradley was bringing it up for the Aztecs. Up next will be Tennessee and Duke. Here, finishing up the first half, Furman and San Diego State. 11.8 to go. It's Bradley. Buffalo there defending. The dance and fire. It's a two, and we're at the half. Parrish had 14 points for San Diego State. Furman was one of eight from the floor over the last 11 minutes. And San Diego State with the lead of 14 equaling their biggest this afternoon. Well, that's what Bradley does. Left, he drives the ball to his right hand, he steps back. All right, Lauren, take it away. Coach, you'll take an 18-1 run all day. What'd you like most about that stretch? I like our defense. We're hard to score against, and then that gives us confidence at the offensive end. Obviously, Micah Parrish has saw the three ball go in, and that helps a lot. Yeah, they average 82 points per game. Uh, expand on the defense. How'd you hold them to 25? Just keep a body in front of a body. Don't get back cut. You know, make everything hard. They're a good team. They're going to score, and we have to mat keep matching them. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Fleet domination by the Aztecs. The rebounding, the points in the paint right on down the line. And Micah Parrish, the junior for San Diego State with 14 in the first half. Kevin Harlan, Stan Van Gundy, Dan Bonner will check in with Lauren Shahadi in just a second. Boy, the defense of San Diego State has been there. Well, guys, we talked about their defense before the game, and they have not disappointed. They've done a great job, particularly with their switching on defense. When their big guys switch out, they can do stuff like this. Look at a rope. He switches on to the shooter, Pegues. Then not only does he block the shot, but he leads the fast break. So not only is that a guy coming off the bench, but that is a great defensive play as well. Yeah, it's a heck of a crossover dribble he made there <laughs> on a guard to create that shot. Their defense, look, a, a lot of people have said, well, they faced the great defense in Virginia, and they did. But this defense is different because it's physically imposing and intimidating. To the sideline and Lauren Shahadi. Kevin, Coach Richie told me yesterday a coach's biggest fear is when you're looking at your team and they're not playing their game, right? Coach just told us, guys, take your time from the perimeter. Get to the free throw line. Then he said, hey, enjoy yourself. I'd rather be nowhere else playing for a chance to go to the Sweet 16. You kidding me? This beats Disney World all day long. 
And Lauren, he said the stage has gotten bigger, but we've got to stay the same. Well, and they were up to the challenge the other day. They got down in the second half. This is a good team. Their offensive approach, Dan, I think has been good. Spread the floor out, get some room, create shots. When they do, they've got to knock them down. They're two for 12 from three. They're going to have to make some threes here in the second half to get back in this game. And they did it against Virginia, another very good defensive team. They scored more than 40 points in the second half on Thursday, and that's the, that's the challenge they face today. Johnson up high, got it. And now we'll try to re-maneuver inside. Swiped at by Alex Williams and a foul called on Furman. Well, and so a change by Bob Ritchie here in the second half. Gary he not starting the second half. Alex Williams in there in his place. So they're a little bit smaller, but also a little bit stronger and a little bit quicker. But well, Williams is a guy who weighed 260, and now he's down to like 225, 230. And he is a powerful six feet six. Johnson's got it. I'm just the opposite, Dan. I used to weigh 220, and now I weigh 260. So. <laughs> winner, <laughs> winner here goes to the Sweet 16 to play either Alabama or Maryland in Louisville. Bradley defended by Foster. Foster did a nice job taking away that step back. Out of the way, and that reach immense a turnover, San Diego State. Yeah, that was great defense by Foster, who is an outstanding defender. And then Slauson did a good job in the low post, and San Diego State did not create a good passing angle into the post, and they end up turning it over against that hard three-quarter by Slauson. So the team in purple with the ball, the Paladins of Furman, 33% from the floor. Stan just said 2 of 12 from 3. 50% shooting for San Diego State. Got to get the ball on the players. Mugis, they go down low, looking for Slauson, who fell on a foul. And it goes on Trammell, who picks up his second. He just got tangled up with Slauson, who did a nice job rolling to the basket. That was a quick cut by Slauson. I like this matchup. I, Mintz is a good defender, but I think Slauson can beat him off the dribble. Bothwell. Slauson outside, shot clock at nine. Blocking his way into Mensa. Trying to feed Bothwell. It's off of the ball. That's a, that's a tough pass. It is. That's a tight window to try to get that into. But Stan, to your point, when Slauson has the ball out there on the wing and he's got a one-on-one -on -one situation, he needs to turn and face Mensa and try to take him off the dribble rather than try to be backing him in. Yeah, that's where he has the advantage. That's where Slauson defense. got in there, yep, knocked it away on the shot by Bradley on the drive. Slauson the other way, it's a three. Rebound by Johnson. And those are the kind they're gonna have to make. That's a wide open three in transition. I think you take that if you're firm. Trammell. The geese was going backwards and a good fake and the two on the floor with the whistle. And it's going to go on Slauson, I believe. It is. Jalen Slauson picks up his second personal foul. On the jump shot, they're fighting for position. Slauson just actually falls down and falls across the legs of Mensa and takes him down. So you can see Slauson is frustrated. You understand why, but that's a foul they have to call. San Diego State has the sixth best record in Division I since 2010. They've won eight Mountain West titles, including this year, both the regular season and the postseason for Brian Dutcher. Well, Brian Dutcher's done an outstanding job and trying to get over the hump now in the NCAA tournament into the Sweet 16. This program's good year in and year out. And that's harder to do than just make it a run in one year. Tramel buries a three. His first basket of the day. And the other thing I'll say to you, Stan, is just because you don't have a lot of success in the NCAA tournament doesn't mean you don't have a great program. That's absolutely right. I, I've always been, Dan, the programs I admire, I don't care what level, are the ones that can sustain success for long periods of time. And San Diego State certainly done that. Slauson was going down low. Pagis, three, no, as Williams and Johnson were jousting. 
And Stan, you're not going to get a better three-point look than that. The defense has collapsed. The ball's kicked out. He's got all day to shoot it. Well, Slauson did an outstanding job there of baiting the help, making him come all the way in, and he got Pegues the wide open look. Swanson now goes up against Butler with a switch. Johnson's on Swanson. That's a long shot, and it's put in by Foster. It's a three. This is where Foster got going the other night on yes. those handoffs where Virginia was going under and giving him space. I know from watching practice yesterday, that is not what San Diego State wants to do on those handoffs with Foster. Butler explodes into the paint. And it's two there and six for the game. Well, that driving lane was set up because of Mince's duck in. He sealed off the help. Butler able to just walk it to the rim. Chiseling is Bockwell. Swanson, another three. Foster can't get that. Johnson snares it. What a Bradley the other way. Racing out for Geese. The move and a whistle, and that's an offensive foul. Swanson picked it up. Third. This, is, this is a great outlet pass by Keyshawn Johnson. Bradley isn't the most explosive guy in the world, but he is so powerful and he's so clever with the ball. He went by two defenders to score that. That was not an easy layup. Yeah, he uses his body so well and he's so strong, as is everyone <laughs> on this San Diego State team. Bradley, three off. With a foul down low, and that is on Furman. And Swanson again, four. That's the kind of pressure that those San Diego State big guys put on you because they are relentless in going to the offensive board. That's a great point, Dan. You go every time you're going to pick up some of those fouls. They put so much pressure on your defense around the basket, inside and on the glass. And right there, you see Mensa. He just he just runs to the glass, runs to the backboard, and Slauson couldn't get in front of him in time. Bradley inside, ducking whistle. And there's another one. Bradley into the paint, catches it with two feet in the paint, puts pressure on you, comes into Foster's body, and Foster, as he gets knocked back, he reaches, that's his third. And that's a really good play by Bradley. You could see him watching the help back off, and as soon as the help backs off, then he's going to the goal. Nice patience. He'll be at the line. But the physicality of San Diego State has been overwhelming in this game at both ends. Bradley, who when he played at Cal, was the third leading scorer in the Pac-12. Second season with the Aztecs. Over 2,200 points in his terrific career. I'm not normally excited by this type of stuff, Dan, but I would pay to go watch a weight room workout of the San Diego State Aztecs. There's got to be some serious iron being moved. So Bradley had 17 points and seven rebounds against Charleston. He's got 10 here this afternoon. Driving Pagis with a rebound by Mensa in the outlet to Trammell. Darion Trammell, the Seattle University transfer. Inside Foster grabs it. Boy, Mensa was going right after that toward again. Alex Williams, here comes Foster. Jackson quickly closes the door in the gap. Alex Williams again. Ooh. That's his size right there. It was. He got size over. But those are tough shots. If those are the ones you have to live on, it's going to be tough to be real efficient offensively. Tramel three. Big rebound collected by Mensa. Off to Johnson. Cutting and slamming his Butler. Give him eight. How about that rebound? You know, he jumps straight Ooh, up in the wow. air, grabs the ball. There's two guys there, but he doesn't get it over the back foul because he just jumps straight up. Is what you were saying at the other end with Furman? That was just size right there. The geese inside, Mensa awaiting. Knocked away by Tramel. Heen. 
who had just come in for Swanson, the driving Pagis. With the whistle and a timeout and 14.56 to go, Butler climbing high, San Diego State on top by 19. Hand it over to Lauren. Hey, Kevin, I was just listening to Coach Richie talk to his team and I fully expected him to talk strategy, but no, he said, where are the smiles? Where are the fist bumps, the high fives? I need more joy. Shaka Smart told him those energy giving behaviors, EGBs as he calls them, changes the mind and in turn changes the game. So Coach Richie counts them. He just told his team, we're only at 65 EGBs. It's not enough. He thinks different, Kevin. Yeah, he does. He is a quality, quality person. One of the best young coaches in the country at 39 years of age. Taking this uh, university to the first NCAA tournament in 43 years. Pagese was on the move and a foul called. It's on San Diego State at the 1444 mark. It's on Ledee who just checks in and that will be his second, Dan. The energy giving behaviors are extremely important, but they have to have basket making behaviors <laughs> and that's what they've been lacking. Uh, that is exactly right. But don't put it all on them. This defense is outstanding from San Diego State. As good as there is in this tournament, there's a quick foul. And that will go on Butler, who is tagged with his third. Well, and that's the third foul of this possession. And that, you see Furman, that they're trying to take the ball and drive it to get it in there to put more pressure on the San Diego State defense. When they had it spread out and they're doing those back cuts and everything, San Diego State was handling that pretty well. But now Furman has made an adjustment and San Diego State will now have to adjust. So now Butler, an all-defensive guy, has to go to the bench, but they bring back in Trammell, who was an all-defensive guy last year. He met at the rim that time by a rope. That's great offensive execution. And a rope just comes over and takes it away. Ledee and Trammell, and Pegues is on Trammell, and Seiko into Vanderwall, ducks and fires. The lead is 21, the biggest today for San Diego State. Yeah, Kevin, Seiko just had his way there physically with Vanderwall, just drove it in the lane, gave him a little nudge, stepped under and knocked it down. But that's only the 12th time all year he's made a two-point basket. This guy is a three-point specialist. Williams. He now has four in the second half, an eight for the game. You're going to have to get Slauson and Bothwell back in the game pretty quickly. I mean, this is the crucial time right here. It is. Seiko. Slashing Ledee. Tremel. Off balance and torch for two. With five for the game. I was actually thinking they were doing too much dribbling of the ball, that the ball wasn't moving side to side, but it shows you what I know. Three, Pagis. They could use to get that three-point game going a little bit. That's his second triple, and he's got six. But they still have time, but if you're in a situation where you're going to have to score just about every time down now, and that is a hard task against this defense. Well, you got to get some stops. This has been a great offensive performance from San Diego State. Parrish was taking it down the lane. Ball knocked away. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. In the second half, Furman has gone four of nine from the floor. But the Aztecs have gone six of 11. Well, the Aztecs over 50% on the day and only five turnovers. That is very good offense to go with a dominating defense. We saw Bothwell check back in for the Paladins, the Southern Conference's leading scorer. Huey just picked up his second foul. I mean, San Diego State puts such pressure on you. They're, they're attacking the basket, attacking the basket, but you know that Seiko shoots the threes, so he just gives you that fake and goes right around. It's a rope trying to save it and keep his balance and got it back. And down the way, rejected inside. Nice knock away that time by Ben Vanderwall. 
There's some energy giving behavior. Right. But this is very interesting because a rope is going to get the shot block. And then he is going to go chase it down over on the other, on the sideline. And as a result of his hustle, they keep the ball because Furman knocks it out of bounds. They never give up on a play, San Diego State. Tremel free. Well, look, if he's going to make those with everything else going on, good luck. He was only one of six on Thursday. He comes in as a 29% shooter from out there. But he's on it today. Foster down low. The D was on him. Shaco watches Pagis. Huey the screen. Another triple try. It's a rope and a foul called on Ben Vanderwall of the Paladins. And that will already send San Diego State to the free throw line. And there's 12 minutes to go in this game. Well, Tramel, they list him at 5'10". I'm not sure he's 5'10". Well, I hope he is, <laughs> because if he is, I'm getting close to six feet, Dan. <laughs> this is Tramel's first season at San Diego State. We mentioned earlier a transfer from the WAC school, Seattle University, where he was first team all WAC. And he led that conference in assists and steals last year. Now he's playing in San Diego for Brian Dutcher, and he has been a force. He certainly has. At both ends of the floor, another guy really strong, quick, gets up under you, puts pressure under the ball. But I walked by him at practice yesterday. He and I are about the same size. I'm saying I'm 5'8". <laughs> <laughs> not, not the same size, the same height. Same, oh yeah, definitely not the same yeah. size. Yeah. No, no, that was a good yeah. point no, by Dan. Yeah, yeah, about it. He's got to be a little gentle. This is your first tournament. Yeah, he should be nicer, but I yeah. agree. Always tipped that time. Nice defense by the leaping Ladie. Racing the other way. Parrish can't catch up with the rolling ball. With a timeout under 12 to go. The Sweet 16 for Brian Dutcher and the Aztecs. But this is a Furman team that shoots 59% from two. Swanson back in, playing with four fouls. Now you got no choice now. No, not absolutely right. I mean, you're, you need him to play these final 12 minutes. He and Bothwell, the geese, all these guys have got to play now. Bothwell driving, down low defending Parrish, who will be assessed the foul. Points this half. Furman's got 10, and Darion Trammell for San Diego State has 10. <laughs> well, the San Diego State offense has been cooking, and when they play offense like this, they are pretty tough. Parrish just picked up his third for the Aztecs in white. Furman in purple, the driving Pagis fouled as he fired. And for the second straight time, San Diego State fouled on a baseline drive, and Brian Dutcher yelling down to his team. A point of emphasis yesterday in their practice was no baseline and no back cuts. They want the ball, everything going middle and over the top of them, and they don't want to break down right now, even though up 23. Trammell with his third. Pagis is at the line, 70%. Free throw shooter hit that. Terrific shot the other day. In three weeks, CBS returns to Augusta National Golf Club for a tradition unlike any other. The Masters coming in April to CBS. So Pagis hits that shot. He hit a similar big-time game-winning, important game shot in high school, which sold him uh, to the coaching staff of Furman. The Furman coaching staff does something that they call they, they put together a clutch reel, and they want to see how a guy performs in the clutch and in those kind of situations. As soon as they saw Pegues make that shot, a game-winning shot in high school, they said, okay, we're going to try to get this guy. He's from Nashville. Trammell. See, Slauson's got to be careful. Our rope is posting him up, and you just cannot risk getting that fifth foul. The D inside and out of bounds. Yes. But you're right, Dan. The problem is, even if you're trying to be careful, they're going to be coming at you every time. Yes. And so the chances of a foul greatly increase because 
they are relentless in the pressure they put on you inside and on the glass. And now they have a line change. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they bring, they, they play nine guys, and their four guys who come off the bench are all guys who can score. Well, it was really interesting watching the practices yesterday because the other three teams basically had walkthroughs. These guys practiced. Pagese driving, plummets his way into the paint. Knocked by Huey, picked up by the Aztecs. Let's send it over to Lawrence. Well, Dutcher oversees during practice, but watch his staff. They're equally as involved. Remember, we saw that in practice. Chris Acker runs the offense. Dave Velasquez controls the defense. He told me, as a leader, you surround yourself with people who are elite, and you let them be elite. Coach Van Gundy, he relinquishes control. We were shocked by that. Yeah, no, he was, he very much believes that. And, and yesterday, Barry Collier, who's here from the selection committee, and I were talking to Coach Dutcher and congratulating him on his first victory in the NCAA tournament. And he sort of shrugged it off. And he said, this is a team thing. And I felt like I was part of a lot of NCAA victories with <laughs> Steve Fisher because we all have our roles. And my assistants are as important to this as I am. And, and reflects not only his humility, but I think he's right. And think about this, they have been ranked more times, San Diego State has, they've been ranked more times in the top 25 than any other California school since the start of the 2010-11 season. So they have a lot of foundation. Oh, that's Slauson. Did they just get Slauson? It is. He's gone. That's exactly what we were talking about. They're going to keep the pressure on. They're going to throw the ball down low. And that very likely ends Jalen Slauson's outstanding career at Furman University. Slauson wraps his arms around Ladee and then bumps him off balance. And you can see why Slauson would be upset about that. But that's the risk that you run. He had to be in the game. That's not a mistake in being in there. And you have to be careful. But it's hard to be careful when they're coming right at you all the time. Slauson from Somerville, South Carolina, got teed up as well. He is the Southern Conference Player of the Year. Last season, he was the SoCon Defensive Player of the Year. A fifth-year senior at the free throw line here. Micah Parrish. And the way this is administered, you administer the technical foul first. So Parrish shoots the technical. Then you pick it up at the point of interruption. We were talking about San Diego State. You know, Dan, and covering the Mountain West as you have in the championship game for several years, the knock on the program had always been always good in conference play, but come NCAA tournament time, they had not found the same kind of success. And Kevin, I guess... You know, that's, that's a fact, but I don't think that really should be the subject of criticism. It's what Stan and I were talking about before. They ha And you've been talking about how often they've been ranked, how many wins they have. They have had an incredible program, and I think that year in and year out sustained excellence is more important than how you play in one game in a crazy tournament like this. Well, do you know what you have to do, Kevin, to uh, get beat in the NCAA tournament a lot of times? You got to get in the NCAA tournament all the time. <laughs> and, and too many times, I think, fans of these teams, especially the good teams, Dan and Kevin, start to take that for granted. Like, oh, yeah, we're just wake up every year and we're in the NCAA tournament, and that's easy. And it's certainly not easy. And when you're a fan of these teams, you need to appreciate being in this tournament. Keyshawn Johnson picked up the foul, his third, for the Aztecs. Well, suddenly now we're having a parade to the free throw line. This is Marcus Foster at the strike. He's a junior out of Atlanta. Halfway through the second. The last time San Diego State made the Sweet 16 2014. Kevin, that's true, but that team they had in 2020 when they 30 canceled, and two, yes. they canceled the NCAA tournament. <laughs> that was the team that was a potential national championship I mean, team. Uh, San Diego State and Kansas that year were just outstanding. But San Diego State had a 30 and 2 record, and then the pandemic, and they shut down the tournament. Well, that preparation that Lauren was talking about from Brian Dutcher and his staff, Dave Velasquez. Chris Ackerman, 
It's showing up now against the 1 2 2 press. They did exactly what they wanted it to do, getting the ball to Bradley in the middle. Here they come with Rothwell. Pegues trying to ooze his way into the defense. Foster. Really good. It's a triple. And he's got 11. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. Well, and that was great ball movement. In the paint, out, extra pass. It's exactly what they need to do. Butler tries and tries. Ten points for him. That's what you have to do when somebody's pressing. You make them pay for it. Well, that's the line that was used in San Diego State's practice all day long yesterday is don't let them press for free. <laughs> Three. And it's off on the shot by Bothwell. Up next will be Duke and Tennessee. And we are harnessing ourselves in for that. Could be a rugged game, Bradley Triple. Rebound Bothwell. Hit Mensa up for the rebound. Foul Aztecs. I love CBS. Sam. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Kevin. See, come on, Stan. I know this is Broadcasting 101. I got to talk about Queen Latifah on the equalizer tomorrow on CBS after 60 minutes. Don't miss Queen Latifah as the equalizer seeking justice for those like Stan Van Gundy with nowhere to turn. New episode tomorrow on CBS and streaming as always on Paramount Plus. Now, well, you know what they call that, right, Kevin? It's a rookie mistake. When you're dealing with rookies, I mean, those are the things that are going to happen. Moments of brilliance surrounded by a lot of mistakes. Pop up at the line and I get one more. And I promise a moment of brilliance is coming at some no, point. No, you've had, it, you've had it all week. Five. We haven't had it yet, but I promise it's coming. Mike uh, is at the free throw line right now for the Furman Paladins. One of the great things about going to practice is that you interacting with the other coaches has just been priceless, Dan. We have enjoyed that as much as anything being here in Orlando. Well, I've loved it. I, there's no group of people out there that I like more been coaches. I grew up around coaches. Her dad, dad was a coach yep, for yep. over 40 years. And getting a chance to talk to and observe these guys has been outstanding. And then there's San Diego State with exactly what they want to do offensively. Pound it in, pound it in, pound it in. And they have done that so effectively. That's 36 inside points now. Just where unbelievable. Keyshot Johnson with that basket. Pegues with the three from way outside and chased down and Corralled by Parrish. And the Aztecs. Successful season, regular season title, postseason title. And Dan, they are now seven and a half minutes away from a sweet 16. And they just keep grinding inside. I mean, they grind you on defense, and then they take the ball down to the other end, and they get those guys posted up. San Diego State with efficiency on offense. And terrific D. The upsets we've seen here is Keyshawn Johnson. Well, what was really amazing about that Fairleigh Dickinson win, Fairleigh Dickinson did not win their conference tournament. Merrimack did. But Merrimack is transitioning to Division I, wasn't eligible for the tournament. So Fairleigh Dickinson only got in the tournament because their champion couldn't go, and then they go in and beat Purdue. But you get an opportunity, you take advantage of it. Free throw shooting this afternoon. The Aztecs have gone 10 of 13. Furman 13 of 16 from the stripe. Seven and a half to go. Here the screen, Pagese will drive. Knocked back by Heen, but it's the quick hands of San Diego State that absorb the ball and men's on top. It's just so hard to get all the way to the basket against these guys. Yeah, you oh. drop that shoulder and you think you got half a step right. on a guy and you're dropping that shoulder into concrete. Parrish to Mensa. Out of bounds. Turning it over, the Aztecs. Watch CBS Sports HQ for free. 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, pitch previews, recaps, and much more.
download the CBS Sports app to watch today. See how I learned there, Kevin? Stayed out of your that way was on good. that promo? Maybe it was the Heisman I gave you that time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Dan. Dan was covering my mouth, too, so that helped. <laughs> well, Dan does that a lot, so get used to it. <laughs> Vanderwall trying to split the D and hits the deck, and it's picked up inside and grabbed by Parrish. Well, that, that kind of play isn't going to get you back in the game. Bradley Mensa. Ho, ho. Mensa getting his sixth point. He averages six a game. Timeout. 6.27 to go. Says it all. Six and a half to go. Aztecs with a win will go on to Louisville. Keen on top. The geese and Wick with a three. With the rebound corralled by Parrish. Rebounding advantage is significant, plus 15 for San Diego State. Kevin, I was just about to say, we've been talking about San Diego State's prowess on the offensive boards. They've really done a nice job controlling their defensive boards. Good point. Under six to go. Butler fires down the lane again. He can explode with the best of them. Give him 12. Well, the bigs, I think now, Dan, are reluctant to help. Yes. Because of the drop-offs in the offensive rebounds. And so Butler's just able to take the ball all the way to the rim. He thought three. Boswell will plow his way into the paint. Knocked away. Down he goes. And a whistle. Mm. San Diego State now. He's grabbing his left ankle there. Another fifth year senior for this Furman team, Bradley. Matt Bradley picked up his first for San Diego State, and he'll hobble to the line. I think he stepped on somebody's foot as he's driving in the Single bonus for Furman. I agree. There was a, a wonderful and moment yesterday in talking with the Furman coach, Bob Ritchie, about Bothell. Remember, he fouled out of the first game with about six and a half minutes to go. But when he fouled out and there was a timeout, and he was trying to get his team, they were down, and he tried to get his team around him. And Ritchie was talking to the official, and Bothwell was sitting in the coach's seat and said, listen, you don't need to win this game without me. As we told you before, he led the conference in scoring. He's, he's one of the leaders on the team. And Richie had overheard that and thought, I've, I've never heard that in a, where a player took such command and such ownership of the situation. He was gone, but he believed in his team. He said, that trust went a long way with our win over Virginia the other day. Well, they made some plays in the second half offensively that they just haven't been able to make today. Pushing five to play. Well, as good as Virginia is defensively, and they're outstanding, they're just not as physically imposing as this San Diego State team. Butler. Menza comes parachuting in out of the rafters to get the rebound. And the other thing is, Furman had a week to get ready for Virginia. They only have 24 hours to get ready for the San Diego State defense, which, as you say, is extremely physically imposing. Johnson. Down low looking for the cutting parish. It ricochets away. From in the other way. We have another line change for San Diego State. Fresh bodies coming in to wear on you. And the fact that San Diego State has not one but two teams in the Mountain West that play a very similar offensive style and made the preparation for San Diego State a little bit easier because they've practiced against this during the course of the year. This Princeton offense. Well, and I'll tell you though, yesterday in practice, this San Diego State team, their entire group was locked in and doing things hard. Bothwell with a miss. Vanderwall throws it against San Diego State. It will be Furman's ball. And it will take on number one seed Alabama or the Terrapins. That game tees off 940 Eastern, 840 Central on TBS tonight. I, I hate to say it, guys, but second half of that game, I, I'm probably not awake. 
<laughs> I just got to be honest. You're about nothing that. but honest, Dan. Uh, That's will, good. It's uh, a great I'll, quality in this business. I'll catch that. I'll either DBR or catch it on synergy. Nice fake by Pegues, and it was still knocked away. Blocked inside. Boy. I think there were three different guys there swatting at that ball. They're playing tennis. Uh, I'll tell you what. We used to have a, or I used to hear a lot of saying that the great players and the great teams have a disposition to dominate. And that is what this San Diego team is doing. They're not playing just well. They are dominating, and they are continuing to play extremely hard, even up 24 with three and a half minutes to go. They go with the miss, he and the rebound, and Pegues will take it the other way. He's got 10. And Furman was hoping that they could get a lot more opportunities like that in transition, but San Diego State just hasn't allowed it. Seiko and a rope with Bradley. Oh, crossover on Vanderwall and on the floor, Foster. Bothwell and Foster a triple. Rebound by Darion Trammell. Nothing wrong with the hustle right, right. there. And, and mean, there's a lot of hustle. They're down by 20 points. They're diving on the floor. They're hustling down. Driving is Ladee. Bradley had the ball, knocked away. Two and a half to go. San Diego State going to the Sweet 16 with an impressive performance in Orlando this afternoon. Is it off? And we have seen a lot of that. San Diego State dunking, shooting layups, little floaters in the lane, post-up moves. They have been impressive inside on offense. Keen with Ledoux defending. Rothwell will get it outside. That was deflected by Parrish, picked up by Buffwell, and that is a rebound by Ledoux. And the defensive pressure just doesn't stop. No, that was their sixth block shot of the day there, and they do not let up. Trammell and a rope. Well, Furman made it fun after that first day. Not maybe if you're a Cavalier fan, but for all college basketball, the four over the 13 was the biggest story for a while. Trammell, three, got another one. And Trammell, 13 points and three triples. He averages nine. Big game this afternoon when it mattered. Ryan Dutch are able to empty his bench and don't discount what a thrill it is for these guys at the end of the bench oh, 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 oh. to get to play in the NCAA tournament. So let's see if we can rattle off these names for these kids. This is a big moment. Jared Bennett is out there, a senior from Westchester High School in Los Angeles, number four. Trammell remains. They've also got Elijah Saunders out there, who they are really high on, number 25, a freshman from Phoenix. And they bring in... Kate Alger, who is from the state of California, Ripon, California, and he is a junior. And they're out there right now to finish it off for San Diego State. Kate Alger had such a good practice offensively with the scout team yesterday that uh, he brought some wrath down on some of the starters because he kept scoring. You know how that goes, Dan. Yes, absolutely. The guys like, you know, we're trying to get ready to play tomorrow. We can't stop Kate Alger. But see, when I was on the scout team, I never had that problem. Everybody could stop me. <laughs> Dan, there's something about self-incrimination here, which I just don't know if that's, if that's right. Good move here by Saunders. And he loses it once he got into the paint. There's the piece. He took this tournament to the edge of their seat with his shot the other day. Yeah, he's had a tough day today against yes. this great defense. Three for 15. But you know what? Furman fans will only remember the shot against Virginia. Nothing else matters right now for J.P. Pagese. Jared Bennett just hit that wonderful shot. Bennett, his second three-point shot made this season. And Bothwell hits one. His first three of the day. Yep. For Bothwell. 
More substitutions now for these two teams. He's going to bring Bothwell out and let the Furman fans show their appreciation for an outstanding five-year career at Furman. Last time Furman was in this tournament, we began the broadcast telling you it was 1980, 43 years ago. And at the root of their success this year to break that long drought was a senior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, in his fifth season, Mike Bothwell. Rhett Lister has come in for the Paladins. He is a senior from Easley, South Carolina, wearing number 14, and he can say he was on the floor for an NCAA tournament game, and a final is in. A lot of respect for, between those two coaches. San Diego State with the win, and the Aztecs are going to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2014.